Good morning, everybody. It's nine o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, happy Tuesday to y'all. Uh, this week, we're going to take it easy on you. Um, I know there's been a lot of changes lately, a lot of new processes, a lot of new things to soak in and have questions about. And so we can certainly um, address any of the questions today. But like a, uh, a good physical trainer, sometimes we go hard and sometimes we take a little break. So this is going to be a little bit of a, a shorter training Tuesday today. A lot, uh, not a lot of new content, um, but like I said, we can touch base on um, any questions that you might have regarding some new stuff. So we're going to talk about the new JPMC list and cooperative participation list that was posted to the up page. Um, one small job aid change, no process change, but just the, the definition of change order is updated on the contract change order on a small purchase. Um, and then we have our introduction to Illinois procurement course tomorrow, which we offer the first Wednesday of each month. And then our quote of the day. All right, so first off, the JPMC and cooperative participation list. So, uh, first of all, what are these? I think it's always a good time um, every once in a while to just discuss what these are. And how they are updated from time to time. So we have the, uh, and, I'll, and I'm going to jump out into the, the, the website and show you how to walk through these too. But I have the steps in here in the slides, so you can always go back and, and take a look at, you know, how how did Dave get to that uh, participation list and the the master contracts list? So you go to the CPOGS homepage. You're going to select Unified Procurement Program at the bottom. Then you're going to go to Processes and Resources for State Agencies. Once you're on that up page, and then. Both of those Excel documents are at the bottom if you scroll down to the bottom. Uh, so let's go out and take a look at that real quick. And, and I just want to identify what those are. And um, we'll go to the CPOGS homepage. We'll do that first. Scroll down to the bottom. We're going to go to Unified Procurement Program. That takes us to our up page. And then Processes and Resources for State Agencies. And then you scroll down to the bottom of that page and we see these two, uh, the cooperative participation list as of January 31st, and then also our JPMC contracts list as of January 31st. And so the cooperative participation list, what are, what are these? So these are where the CPOGS up team has posted that the state of Illinois is a participant in these procurements. Okay, make these a little bigger so we can see. And these also have links to them as well. So these are the bid postings that are in bid by that has the links and the bid numbers. Um, the cooperative that is uh, conducting that procurement, the description and the expiration if it was awarded, and then the link to the cooperative contract. So many times, if if the state of Illinois was a participant as a part of you know when say NASPO or Sourcewell or Omnia does a procurement. The state of Illinois is a part of that contract or in, in the agencies are able to use that contract. So this is different than a piggyback when we see, um, sorry, someone's saying we're not able to see your screen. Um, it looks like I'm sharing my screen. Can somebody else let me know if you guys can't see my screen? Okay, you can't see it. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, so these are, again, these are, the state of Illinois was a participant as a part of this solicitation that the cooperative or consortiums conducted. Um, it wasn't conducted by the state of Illinois, but we are a participant and we are able to utilize that contract. So you can go to the link to these cooperative contracts and up is really good at updating these lists um, from time to time. So when we talk about these every couple months, I will come back and I may not go in as much of a deep dive as, as I am today but certainly we'll let you guys know that uh, this has been updated. And so also you'll see some of these, the expiration date, when it was awarded, when it was effective and a link, but you'll also see if, if you scroll down towards the bottom, many of these are still in process. So you can see that um, it's pending, it's awarded, but there isn't a contract yet, some of those sorts of things. So they'll get added to the bottom, but you, it's good to know at least, you know, maybe you can go and take a look at a couple of things that are, kind of in the process that hopefully soon there could potentially be some contracts available for use. But certainly the links up at the upper, on the upper half, have the direct links to those contracts. So if your agency is looking towards, um, you know, just always keep in the back of our mind that there are other opportunities for contracts that your agency might not have to 
conduct a, a brand new procurement. And these are these are out there for you. Okay, so that's the cooperative participation list. The other list is the JPMC contracts list. This is just a, a master list of the JPMC master contracts that are out there. So we get that question many times. Hey, is there a list where um, we have all of the J joint purchase master contracts available? Now you can go into bid buy and you can also search for items in in the um, in the, the the search functionality in bid buy. But there's also you can search here and for for all the joint purchase master contracts that are available for you. Um, and also they the up team is really nice and puts a direct link to the uh, that purchase order for that master contract. You can also see the um, who conducted the procurement with the organization. So whether that's CMS, do it, uh, ISB, CPOGS, um, the vendor, as well as the contract end date. So you can jump here. You can do you know you can go and find kind of a keyword, um, but know that those are out out here. All of these contracts. Um, I, I received this question a few weeks ago. All of these contracts are also in bid buy, so they're, it's not um, it, it's not as if they are a separate list. It's just it's nice to have a, a a handy list of all the joint purchase master contracts that are here, and then you can go and search for that purchase order number and access the actual master contract and and dig in a little bit more. Okay, so thanks again for the up team or to the up team for updating that um, updating that list for us. That's really nice. And then we'll go back to our slides. Okay, so the one small change regarding the small the change order to a small purchase contract. So now that's version 23.2. The only thing that was changed was just the definition of contract change order um, at the top of the job aid. So uh, as you recall, recent legislation changed and the procurement code changed the definition um, or the I guess technically not the procurement code, the, uh, the criminal code changed the definition of uh, contract change order. So you can see here in red, it used to be $10,000. If you were increasing or decreasing a public contract by a total of $10,000 or more, or the time of completion by a total of 30 days or more, it was 10,030. Now that has changed to $25,000 and 180 days or 180 days, I should say. So it could be either one. It doesn't have to be both. Um, with that change, that simply just means that we're probably not going to see as many contract change orders on small purchases, um, but there is certainly a, a chance that that could occur. So the process did not change at all. It was purely just the um, uh, the definition that we had at the very top of the of the of the job aid. So you're just going to do it. It's going to occur at the purchase order. Um, you still will need SPO approval for that. Again, remember anything that's changing the contract uh, does need SPO approval. So make sure that you're getting the proper approvals if that were to occur for your, your change orders, for your contract change orders, right? Okay, um, our introduction to Illinois procurement course. This is the course that we offer the first Wednesday of every month. Uh, that will be tomorrow at 9 a.m. Normally we wrap up between 1130 and noon. We, we take a little break in the middle. This is perfect for anybody who is new ish to procurement, or maybe you just want a little bit of a refresher. So what are the things that we're going to talk about? Uh, we talk about who is involved in procurement. There's a lot of moving pieces in Illinois public procurement. Uh, what are their responsibilities? How does everybody fit in a timeline of a procurement? How is a procurement conducted? We talk about the different procurement methods that are available for use. Uh, we talk about vendor requirements. We talk about when when financial disclosures and conflicts of interest are required, what registrations are required to conduct business with the state of Illinois. And then we also talk about communications. So what can and can't you say if a vendor emails you or calls you and uh, what is a reportable communication? Those sorts of things. Uh, so, like I mentioned, we we break it up. We have a, a short little break in the middle. We normally go 9 to 10, take a short little break and then we do 10, 15. Uh, so like I said, 11.30, 11.45 is usually about where we go, depending on um, questions and, and discussion. This is also approved for two credit hours uh, for UPPCC. So if you are looking to get certified or recertify, uh, please, uh, please join us and you will get credit for that. 
Uh, let's see. Sorry, I missed a question here. Uh, did the definition for contract change orders on, on purchases above? Yes. So the, the, the definition, so let me go back to that since it's right here on this job aid or the, on the slide. This is the definition. Um, make that bigger. This is the definition of contract change order. So it's, it's regardless of whether it's on a small purchase or not. Uh, so to answer your question, the question was, did the definition for contract change orders on purchases above the small, uh, small threshold change? Yes, it is from, and, and you can see here, 720 ILCS 5 and then 33 E9 is where that uh, definition changed. It's just our processes for bid buy. I hadn't updated that definition on the small purchase um, change order job. Aid. So that was that was my uh, over. I overlooked that when we changed job aids a couple weeks ago. So I apologize for any confusion that that might have caused. Um, and thanks, Chris. Chris answered the question as well. Yep. All right. So going back to our class, you can register here. Um, I haven't showed everybody this in a while, so uh, I'll, I'll quickly jump in here. Just click on that. It's going to go to the register for introduction only procurement. You can select the most uh, which day you want. So it doesn't have to be the most recent one. So tomorrow um, is the next offering, but certainly I could go in there right now and register for Wednesday, April 5th. Wednesday, May 3rd, et cetera, et cetera. And then you'll just need to put in your first, last name, and email address, and then click register in the bottom right hand side. And uh, we'd love to see you there tomorrow morning. Um, and then our slide where you can find our CPO, uh, our training center, and what is available on the training center. And then our quote of the day good old Abe Lincoln. Gotta love it when you can throw Abe in there. Most folks are as happy as they make up their minds to be. That's a great reminder. Our minds are a powerful thing. We can decide how we're going to have, how we're going to feel, and we can decide that we're going to have a good day. So hopefully everybody has a great rest of your day. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to cpogs.training at illinois.gov, and uh, we'll see you next week. The slides will be posted uh, shortly, and they'll be sent to everybody uh, per the way we normally do. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a great week.